Welcome to Higher Ed, teaching from a Christian perspective. I'm your host, Chris Cassidy. Thank you for joining us for episode two of this podcast. What is truth? I work at Hawthorne Christian Academy in Chester, South Carolina, and there I am able to teach science and Bible. I am blessed to get to teach those classes. And many times the question comes up, what is truth? In science, we can clearly see the laws of physics and chemistry and know what is true and what is false. We know that gravity affects all objects equally. That is a truth. Yet when it comes to morality and worldview, there seems to be discussion on what is true. It seems that it is based on people's opinion and not on truth. So my question of this episode is, what is truth? And can truth be found as an absolute? And if so, where can it be found? This is why worldview is important in education. As we know, education is the passing of knowledge, ideals, beliefs, and values from one generation to another. The philosophies of one generation become the standards for the next. Education, though it tries, cannot be neutral in its design or implementation. It is based on the views of their creators. And in the case of Christian education, it is based on the Creator, biblical principles. If that foundation is based on man's wisdom, it will fail. Matthew 7, 26 tells us, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. If we are basing our worldview on anything but the Bible, God's Word, it's going to be washed away over time, just as the Bible says here in Matthew 7, 26. So if we base our worldview on man's viewpoints, it will change literally from day to day. That is why absolutes are necessary. That is why moral relativism is wrong. Moral relativism is the view that moral judgments are true or false only relative to some particular standpoint. For instance, that of a culture or a historical period, and that no standpoint is absolute. It is based on the situation. So in addition to moral relativism being not based on absolutes, It is also heavily based on feelings. Anytime you encounter someone that does not have a biblical worldview, oftentimes they're going to say, I feel this way. Feelings are very important to them in their decision-making process. It's how do you feel, not what do you think. So oftentimes, when we are dealing with moral relativism in our society, we not only have to overcome this literally changing of day-to-day of values, but also their feelings are attached to these decisions, and their feelings are the basis on what they believe. Now, I know what you're thinking. God gave us emotions. Yes, he did. Emotions are a wonderful thing and a gift from the Lord. This ties into our head-heart relationship, but when our heart overrules our thinking, that leads us astray. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah here is telling us that many times our emotions lead us astray. We hear of stories and we make decisions based on our emotion and not on the facts and most importantly, not based on biblical principles. We are deceiving ourselves when we allow our emotions to to make all of our decisions for us. 
Now, you may be thinking, what does this all have to do with Christian education? Well, if you'll remember at the beginning of the program, we said the philosophies of one generation become the standards for the next. And as moral relativism has creeped into our society, it's also creeped into the pulpit. And in May of 2022, the Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University did a nationwide survey of Christian pastors and found that just 37% of these pastors possess a biblical worldview. More than 62% hold a worldview that is mixed with moral relativism and that there are situations where the Bible is wrong. And so we see that as the philosophies have infiltrated the church, they've infiltrated Christian schools, they infiltrated universities, and they no longer believe what they used to believe. This is very important in Christian education. If we do not stay in our standards, if we do not stay in our biblical principles, then our education will be a faulty one, and we will be raising up a generation of young people that do not understand there is truth and that there is right and wrong. I'd like to conclude this episode with a cautionary tale of what happens to Christian institutions when they turn away from the Bible and biblical principles. Harvard University was the first university founded in the United States. It was founded in 1636, and its mission was that its students be plainly instructed and consider well that the main end of your life and studies is to know God and Jesus Christ. What exactly happened to the church, and where did Christ go at Harvard? It used to be that Harvard had one mission, training young men for the ministry, and it wasn't overnight that it transformed into the secular university we know today. Rather, the movement gathered momentum gradually, moved by intellectual leaders who slowly replaced the Bible and Christ as the foundation to one of human morality and relativism. Their motto used to be for Christ and church, and later it was changed to just veritas or truth. Isn't it interesting that this university, so prestigious and so regarded, once taught the truth, and now is actually seeking it because they have lost the truth along the way. And so that is why Christian education is important, and that is why a biblical worldview is important. We have to prepare the next generation of young people. We have the truth. We have to make sure they remember it and know it. As we conclude this episode, let us close in prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for this opportunity to learn more about you and our biblical worldview that you give us. I pray, Father, that this podcast be a blessing to those who listen to it and may it inspire and motivate the next generation of Christian school teachers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for Higher Ed.